All right. Hey guys, I think I set this up right. I'm gonna need you to help me to make sure it is. I'm using the wireless microphone here. I'm gonna be able to turn it off if I wanna play this guitar a little bit after we unbox it. But let me know if this is working all right before we get started. I wanted to do this because I've never really done this before, I don't think. If we did, it was a long time ago. So I've never opened it straight out of the box from the truck and shown you guys what the process is like and what you can expect if you order a guitar from a reputable shop in Japan. Okay, I want a Telecaster 40, but with a bound body. Yeah, bound body Telecasters are my favorite, my favorite ever. So if this is working, we can get right to it. Just let me know real quick in the, the chat here if everything's okay and we'll get started, but I'm really excited for this. This was the first time since I moved here that that DHL got this to me on the delivery date promise. Normally it's about a week after that. So I was very, very pleasantly surprised. Make sure I have a pick on me. I do. So, let's see. And this really is, <laughs> I don't know myself, I haven't seen it, just in pictures obviously, it's always kind of a crapshoot to an extent when you buy from Japan. But this is a good shop, I've never had problems with them. Okay, move this out of the way. We don't need that box anymore. So, what do you guys think? What do you guys think? As usual, gig bag. Let's see if anything's in the... Got a warranty card, a full-on check in kanji. There's a replacement parts note on it, but it's all in kanji, and I don't understand a few of these words. All right. That's interesting. Hopefully it's pickups. Because <laughs> that's the only thing with some of these Japanese fenders. All right. It's a Chandler, the moment of truth. Modern made in Japan. It's not modern. Yeah, not. So, that's your first giveaway. Holy good God. That is amazing. The transparentness. Oh, this is beaten to hell. The back of it has a lot of buckle wear on it. But, it's a double bound, alder bodied. Telecaster Custom in the transparent blue. This is stunning. I wonder what was changed on it. The neck is perfect. This neck looks like it has never been used. Same for the tuners, obviously. Uh, no fretware whatsoever. Let's have a look. Let me move the light back a little bit so you'll get a better vantage. But it's a really nice transparent blue on this guitar. See, see look at that buckle, buckle rash. And don't bother me so much. But, you know, when people are buying guitars, that's something that would bother them. But as a whole here, this is, this is really, really nice. Um, JD-16, so it's a 2016 guitar. This was obviously used um, live a bit because you don't develop this kind of scratching if it's not. So, that's pretty cool. Let's see what's going on here. All right. Obviously, it's not going to be in tune. Should we go E flat or E standard?
I know it's probably going to be the most boring part of all this. Let me catch up on some of these comments while I'm tuning. It's kind of nice having this setup. Not going to lie to you guys. It's used. Uh, there we go. Yep. Thank you. Yes. The, I like how Fender Japan gets the neck tinting right. And that they use rosewood. That Pal Faro yesterday, if you're, if you're not in the Discord, if somebody that's in the Discord right now, if you guys will post an invite to anybody else in the chat, because I can't do that because I'm doing this, um, that would be amazing. So you guys could all join. I posted yesterday a Ventera, and it looked like, it, it was a Pal Faro neck, but it looked like a maple neck. That's how light it was. And I just, I can't get over how people are okay with it. It just looks, looks atrocious on a, um... A model like this, where it's supposed to be a classic design. Obviously, I will, I will take this thing apart, and we'll see about the pickups. But it's got brand new strings on it. I don't want to waste them. And I'd like to hear how it sounds as is before I know. Okay, so, all right, go flat just for fun, just join, things are good, thanks, John. How does this compare to the JV quality-wise? It's right on par with it. I can tell you that the build quality is going to be the same. But this was less than the JV by a, a noticeable margin. I love the rosewood neck on it. And another thing that I like about this model Oh, it's a TL62B, um, so it's a Telecaster 62 reissue. The B stands for the binding. You can find some of these that come stock with a Bigsby. It's a little, they get a little heavy when they, with, with the factory Bigsby for whatever reason. They always tend to weigh around 9 pounds or so, uh, just over 4.1 kilograms on average is what I see when I order from Japan with the, when the Bigsby ones come for sale. So it's a little heavier for my taste, but... The overall build quality of these things is is fantastic. There's 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 nothing to complain about. All right. The only other thing that um this this actually has in common with the custom shop, except on the custom shop it's relic. It has it doesn't have a compensated the compensated bridge saddles on it. So it has the the same ones as like a vintage Jaguar, the Jazzmaster. On these kinds of guitars, it's not gonna be a big deal because it's not gonna pop out. But on a Jag or a Jazz Master, it's like, a, oh, you have to really know what you're doing to set those up. And I have the Mesa plugged in. And luckily with this setup, I think I'm going to be able to just turn this receiver off for a second. And then the microphone from the Mesa will go into the interface. And you should be able to hear this. Like I said, this is my first time doing this. We're figuring this out as we go here. But... If this system works, every time I get something in, we can do this. It'll be a fun little event for everybody instead of just a normal old video. All right. Close enough. Like I said, I know nobody wants to watch me tune a guitar, but I'd rather stretch the strings out now instead of retuning it while I'm playing it. Let's have a test. Let me know if you hear. Sounds good, but I know that this mic was also picking that up too. So let me just check in here. You can hear it. Is it um, Steve from Boston got a Jackson earlier this week that it had a fingerboard that was supposed to be dark wood? It looked like light maple. Yeah, that's that's a common thing I'm seeing right now in general here. Um, even when I had the original six, original 60s, American original 60s Jaguar, the neck on that was a rosewood neck, but it was nowhere near the hue, the darkness of this, it was super light, even for rosewood. And so 
I'm not sure if it's how they're drying these things out or they're not keeping them lubricated or, you know, just properly, you know, using lemon oil and stuff like that for these boards. It, it, it looks, it looks kind of bad. It look, it, it, honestly, in my opinion, it makes it look cheap. I know that in, in practice, something like Palfero, um, tonally, it's, it, it, it sounds great. It sounds fine. You're never going to pick out one from the other, but when you're looking for a classic look, like something like this, this is, this is, this is a really good looking guitar. Um, yeah, it just looks weird with a super light neck. And that's part of the reason I'm not a big, the biggest fan of the Venteras. So, all right, let me see. Actually, I'll try and see if, get here. So you guys, oh, you, can you get it? Share the link, Rafa. Share the link. You can do it. I'd appreciate that. So I'm going to turn this thing off, and I'm going to check the levels real quick to make sure that it's not too quiet. And we'll get going. I'll play it a little bit, then we'll get going. Okay, so I was able to manipulate that a little bit here. The first thing that you notice about, when you, even if it's lightly used, the necks on this guitar, like the, the, fret, edge, the fret edges on this instrument, it's just as good as America, if not a little bit better than the recent ones I played. They actually, I, I think it really has to do with the philosophy of, you know, maybe their factory doesn't put a, out as many guitars, right? But the guitars that they do put out, they actually put in that extra little bit of effort. So culturally, and I've spoken to people that work in Japan, they look at it from the perspective of they would rather put out less but keep their reputation high than put out more and then suffer some of the inconsistencies like some of the other Fender plants do. 
and they, they operate independently from uh, the Fender America model and the Fender America kind of ecosystem. Like they're, they're, they're loosely part of it, but they're, they're not connected in the same way that um, the Mexican factory, the Chinese factory, and the Indonesian factory are. So they kind of just do their own thing. But I mean, if, you, if you've never played one of these, this is, this is so good. I really like this finish, despite all the, the buckle rashes on it. It's got a good weight to it. Man, I, I don't got much to say. I'm ready to uh, actually film a video with this guitar. I just wanted to share this with you guys. Let me see what the chat's saying. Uh, I like Ebony. That would be pretty interesting if this was Ebony. I'll say that. How does this compare with the Affinity Telly? One is a toy, one is a guitar. No offense. Um... I'm a sucker for ebony necks. Yep. Yeah, Brazilian ones, Rosewood's amazing. You want to hear my take on earth guitars? I've demoed an earth guitar, Raph. What do you want to know? The only thing about the earth guitar that um, was weird to me was the frets themselves weren't all like cut to the correct length like they were they, the, the edges of them were very well rounded off on the earth right but they weren't cut like uniform to the exact right length as it went up and down the neck so like for instance on frets like i think it was fret eight and fret six they were a little bit shorter so despite them being smooth like when you're actually moving up and down the neck on the one that i had like i was like it felt like a gap a little bit it was really strange but the fretwork on that guitar outside of that was insanely good. I thought the pickups on the Ert were much better than the pickups in the, that come with Harley Benton's. I, I, that's another thing I will absolutely say. I thought that that Ert smoked the Harley Benton stock for the pickups for the model that I had. And it really wasn't close. Uh, I, I can leave a link to that video. That was, that was very eye-opening to me. And... You know, I always thought that the, the, the Fusion 3 was the guitar that I put up against the Ert, which is also an HSS. The Fusion 3, I thought sounded pretty good, you know, and compared to the, the, the JV Strat, obviously, it was never going to touch that. But when I played it against the Ert, I was like, oh my, oh my God, I don't, I don't know what pickups are, are being used here, but these are two equally priced guitars, and the Ert had much better electronics and pickups in it. Um, Transparent Blue, I believe, is the official name. Yeah, this is this is so nice looking. And the top here. I fell for that trick too, Terry. This is not a three. This is a two. Yeah, it's just it's just a fade. This is this is a two piece body, not a three. All right. Yeah. So this is a this is a guitar. And you might be thinking, why on earth are you doing this? Why on earth did you buy another Telecaster? You just got a JV. You have a custom shop. You have a Harley Benton. Well, the car engine. Originally, I bought this. I was going to sell this. I'm, I'm going to keep this guitar now. The engine won't be done for it blew, if you didn't see the stream yesterday. And we only have one car. So that engine will not be done for four to five months. We're going to get re re reimbursed for everything because it wasn't our fault. The people that initially did the oil change never filled the oil. We have evidence of it from, and we have statements from the shop we initially brought it to and from Mazda themselves saying, yeah, this is this was fraud. Like They, they, they didn't do, there's negligence, not fraud. Um, they didn't do the job uh, in the correct manner, and that led to the engine um, seizing because there was no oil in it, and the indicator, for whatever reason, didn't go off. So we paid all this money up front for that. And we decided, you know, we're not going to buy another car right now. So we have to manage a few things around. I'm going to sell the, the custom shop. And when I rebuy a Fender custom shop, it will be probably something a little bit, a little bit different. Maybe one of those double TV Jones ones, something like that. I don't know. Uh, or a thin line. Something of that nature, or a paisley thin line, something, something just very different for there. I'm gonna take the money in here because we just spent a lot of money up front, and we have to we make sure we can get places. We have to make sure we can get our kid to school. This is gonna be a lot of lost income temporarily, 
but everything works out fine and you don't need to feel bad for me. Uh, one of the reasons that I do invest in these guitars and I do when I see a really good deal like I did uh, on that custom shop or all the custom shops, uh, I buy them because I know if something happens, I do have a reserve amount of money. And then if something like major happens, it's like, okay, this has to be addressed. I got something I can, I can flip, uh, get a good profit on it, get a lot of capital to kind of replenish the emergency funds here and still be just fine. So it is what it is. It is what it is. It sucks. But I mean, this is, this is a great guitar. So let me catch up here. Japanese cut up use are traditional to a fault. Yep. Uh, bought a Yamaha. 82 made in Japan. Still got it. The best bass ever. Yamaha makes amazing stuff. Thank you, guitar, everyone. The color is quite similar to the X robot. You want it? Yeah. Let's look at them. Let's hold them up next to each other. That'd be really funny, actually. So, look at that. And my favorite color is blue, so I'll be damned. Rafa, I didn't even consider that. The only difference is, no, this is a transparent blue, too. <laughs> so what do you think? Just two, two blue, double-bound Japanese guitars? <laughs> Uh, I didn't plan it this way. I did not plan that. And that just shows my head has been everywhere. I hadn't even considered that. I had not even considered that. I would have noticed it when I went to put it in the stand later today. But I didn't, I, I didn't think of that. That's very interesting. Awesome. Yeah, did, 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 I wanted one of the... Um, yeah, it's definitely a gigging pair. It's definitely a gigging pair. Maybe the JV will stay home. Well, what the hell is the point of any of this? I'm an idiot. Um, I wanted to get one of the Rev Stars. Uh, I wanted the $799 model that had the Merlot finish and the P90s. And when I was looking to buy that, that was at the same, it was about a week before I bought the Harley Benton. I was like, I, was like, I want something different. And the Rev Star sounds really cool. Those guitars in the finish I wanted aren't going to ship, they said, until August. So they're like, we'll take all your money now, and, you know, it'll ship to you first thing in August or September. I was like, nah, I'm good with that. Don't want it that bad. So, yeah, it is a pattern. It's a terrible pattern. But, yeah. And, and the only reason I didn't want to really go with the uh, the 77 as much. I'm, I'm going to do it now. But it was because I ordered a mono double gig bag and it won't fit a 335 size instrument. And I wanted to only have one gig bag. So Telecaster and the Paul Reed Smith both fit in the, in the mono gig bag. Whereas a 335 and a Telecaster will not fit in the same mono gig bag. So I'll just have to keep this one in its gig bag. It's already scratched up. I actually like, I like the fact that there's no like actual like chips or anything like that, but that there is buckle rash because it's just like, eh, whatever. I don't care at that point. And yeah, there's no actual structural damage. This thing is, this thing is great. And I actually think it sounds good. So I'm, I'm, I'm leaning towards that. These are not the stock pickups in this guitar. Uh, we'll have a closer look. I'll make a full video. Once these strings go, we'll revisit this guitar. I will take apart the, uh, the pick guard, and we'll have a look underneath, and we'll, we'll look under this guy too. Uh, yeah, not much else to say. I just thought this would be something fun, something different. It's not every day that you know I show you guys as I get something. So let me just see here. Are you sure that isn't transparent sapphire blue? Might be. All I know is from, let me read the kanji. And that's the other thing, because I, I read some of the kanji, and there's translation kind of issues, not issues, but um, problems. Um, what do they call this? Yeah, it just says transparent blue alder is what it translates directly to. But it might be, it might, it might technically be sapphire. Transparent sapphire. Blue Fender Japan. 
Telecaster. Yeah, that might be it. That might that might be it. Yeah, and then there's other places um, uh, that will just call it see-through blue, but I I know that's not what they I know that's not what Fender themselves called any of these colors. So we'll have to figure that out and go from there. But guys, how cool is this? And yes, like Rafa said, so should we make a um a song with this and the X Roboto together? I mean, it's a perfect match, a 335 and a Telecaster. They're the two best guitars as far as uh, covering all your bases here. They fight it out a lot. Build the best budget, double-bound, blue, see-through guitars. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely not the stock pickup. I could tell from the, um, the cloth underneath and how the pickup is wound. Yep, that's definitely not a stock pickup. Be interested to see what it is. Maybe it's a Texas special. Maybe it's something else. But, yeah. In case you got anything else for me, I'm just going to call it a day for this. Uh, I have, uh, you know, the little one in about an hour. And don't have a ton of time. I'm going to try and film for the, the long-term review for the JV Strat right after this. Basically, I'm going to just do the sound samples. And then you'll just, you'll see it's light when I'm playing the guitar. But when you're watching me actually talk, it'll probably be dark because I'll film the talking part when she goes to bed. But other than that, uh, we have Dave is sending me a playthrough video of the demo he did with the Harley Benton on the baritone. He already has the song done. He's just going to film himself playing along with it, and then he's going to give his quick review. That should be interesting. You guys will get a kick out of that. Dave is hilarious. As you know, he pulls no punches, and uh, you, you got you to gotta love him for it. So that should be cool. But outside of that, we are just, we're just going to push forward. We're going to go and do the best that we can given these circumstances. Like I said, we have no car right now between... My wife and I, and just a lot of things that we have to do, work to do. Luckily, I work, you know, here. So it's it, to me, it's not the biggest deal, but trying to get my kid to and from school and my wife to and from her job. So it's like, oh, man, it's a, it's a lot to take in. But solutions will happen. Keep a positive mind. We all good. So hope you guys enjoy this. If I had to guess what this thing weighed, I would say 7.1 pounds. That would be my guess. Very lightweight guitar. Very pretty. I love this. This is great. All right, this kind of softens the blow a little bit, but I'm going to turn this thing off. Thank you guys for checking this out. I know this was out of the normal, but love seeing you guys. And, oh, one other thing I want to show you before we go here. I got a package from a viewer. Mr. Joe. If you're in here, Joe, maybe we will use this. He sent me a Friedman small box to try out. If I like it, we'll work something out. And yeah, I've never I've never tried one of these pedals. And I was just like, oh my God, like he actually really sent me a guitar pedal to try out. So that's amazing. Maybe we'll have a thing where I'll pay for all you guys to, to ship me stuff that you're not using and I can demo it. <laughs> that, would, that would not be cost efficient at all. But it would be fun and I appreciate the sentiment so much on this. So I'm going to hook you up with something regardless here uh, for sending me this so we can demo it out and that everybody can hear my take on the Friedman small box. So that should be really cool. Thank you so much for that, Joe. But yeah, that's it. Go. It's Friday. If you're at work, just suffer a few more hours. Go home. Go have a drink for me because I can't drink. I'd appreciate that very much. Uh, I'm going to set up the JV and the camera, and we're going to start filming that. And yeah, I will see you guys tomorrow. And I will post the poll for the favorite football club. I didn't forget that either. Just had a lot of stuff to do. So thank you for checking it out. Take it easy, everybody.